Hi, I'm Mitch. Welcome to Get Into Woodworking. And today I'm going to show you how to make a box joint, which will allow you to make a box. A box joint is also called a finger joint, so I'll be using finger joints and box joints, fingers and box joints, box joints and fingers, um, interchangeably throughout the video. So <laughs> let's just get on with it. So what exactly is a box joint? Well, it's a joint where we're joining two pieces of wood together, usually at a right angle, and the joint is uh, comprised of fingers. Each board has uh, fingers cut on the end of it, like so. Those fingers interlock with each other, you get long grain to long grain surface areas on there, so the glue joints are really nice and strong. From a design point of view, the most important thing, I guess, is how many pins you have in each joint. And if you have a, an even number of pins, then let's say four, I'll show you my fingers, you're gonna have a gap at the top of this board and a finger on the bottom, and the other board is gonna start with a finger on top and a gap on the bottom. So I don't personally like that, so I go for an odd number of pins. So let's say three on this side, four on that side. That way you end up with one board that's got a pin both top and bottom, and one that's got a gap both top and bottom. Now if you're going to make a box, it's a good idea to start with a board that's as long as two sides and two ends. Cut that into the four pieces, so you end up with a side and an end, and another side and an end. Cut them in that order, you can then grain match on that joint, this joint, and that joint. It is possible to get a grain match all the way around a box. It's a little bit more complicated. You need to resaw a piece of wood. So let's uh, just demonstrate that. Start with a thick board, resaw it down the middle, then open it out like this. And you'll find that these two ends are a grain match to each other, these two are a grain match to each other, and then you can slice each of those into a side and an end, and they will be grain matched as well. Now how do you break down a board into the pieces for your box? We use a square on the face edge and first of all mark a square end and cut off the waist nice and square. And decide how long you want the box to be. Mark that. You don't have to measure this, just mark the length. It could be a hand span or anything else, it doesn't matter. You can measure if you want, but it really doesn't matter. Mark it, use a square, knife that and cut nice and square. So you've got one long side. Now determine how long you want the end to be. And these are all external measurements. Again, don't need to measure it, just, uh, just decide, mark it off and cut it square again. So you've got one side and one end. Now use the original side to mark the length of the opposite side. Use a knife to mark the end. And saw that nice and square. And you've got two sides exactly the same length. Then use the original first end. Use that to determine the length of the other end. Knife that. Use a square and saw that nice and square. Then you end up with two sides exactly the same length and two ends exactly the same length. You can put them together in a box just by wrapping them around like so and you'll keep, in this case, a grain match on three of the joints. All you need to do now is prepare the joints on each of the four corners. So I'm going to demonstrate making the finger joint using these two pieces. They're not a grain match, but they're the same height and thickness, although thickness doesn't actually matter. And the first thing I want to do is to have three fingers on one side, two on the other. So I need to divide each of those pieces into five sections. 
Now I'm not going to use a, a rule or a tape for this. I'm going to use a pair of dividers. So taking the dividers and I'm going to guess roughly what a fifth of that uh, distance is. Set the dividers and then step them off from one edge. One, two, three, four, and I guess quite well that's almost spot on. Just need them a, a little bit wider. So having adjusted those, let's try again. One, two, three, four, five. That's virtually spot on now. That'll do. In actual fact, you don't need to have your um, fingers equally spaced. You can put them wherever you like. But using dividers is a really quick method of, of getting them equally spaced. So now we've got the setting for them. I can step them off again and just mark uh, each position with a pencil. Like so. To determine how deep the fingers have got to go, take the board that we've just marked out now, so we've got the going to have three fingers along there. Place the board that's going to join it on top. Butt it up against something hard like the uh, stock of a tri-square. Then use a knife, just make a little mark on that board. Take that away. And transfer that point right across the board. That gives you the depth to which you need to cut the pins, the fingers. Transfer that all the way around. Now use the tri square again to transfer the division markings down to that uh, knife line. And also across the end of the board. And you'll find this a lot easier if you clamp the board in the vise. So we're ready to saw and I've got the markings on the top here and on my side so you can't see them on this side. But basically I'm going to track the saw in the, uh, the marker across the top pencil line and then I shall bring it down the pencil line that's facing myself and then gradually level it out. Cutting down to the knife line on both faces. Now before I make a terrible mistake, I'll just mark in which pieces we need to remove. Now I can either use a fret saw or this jeweler's saw that takes the same blade as a fret saw to cut out the waste. Now the reason I need to use one of these saws is because I use a Japanese saw to cut uh, the sides of the fingers and it's very thin, got a very thin kerf, so I need a thin blade to go down there. Many western back saws, including many dovetail saws, would leave a wide enough kerf to use a coping saw here. Now with a chisel slightly narrower than the waist we need to remove, I'll chop it and I'll gradually approach my knife line, finally resting it in the knife line and chopping for the final time before Preparing away the, the corners that the chisel didn't quite reach because it's not quite wide enough. So far I've just chopped halfway from the one side, now I'll flip it over and complete it on the other side. So with those fingers, pins, whatever you want to call them, nicely cut out, or at least the gaps cut out. I can use that now, lay it on the other piece and use that to lay out exactly where I want to cut the second piece. So just make sure the edges are lined up, make sure the ends are lined up. Sharp pencil. So if 
I square those marks now down the face, go back to the vise and cut those out. down to the knife lines with a sharp chisel. If all's gone well, you should find that your two pieces go together and slide together. A little bit of friction, but not too much. When you put glue on, it's going to tighten things up, so you want to be able to put them together and take them apart without too much effort. The surfaces you want to get glue on are these long grain surfaces, so each side of each finger. beauty of a finger joint is, if you cut it well, you could put it together, set it at the angle you want, say normally 90, and it will hold itself there, you shouldn't need any clamps. Now that's had a whole day to cure, so it's nice and strong. Embarrassingly, I have actually got some slight gaps on some of my joint lines there, but we'll plane it off and uh, show you the result. So you can probably see there's a very slight gap just here and also around that joint line. I'll put that down to trying to get to in the frame and I was sawing it and not paying enough attention. But I can show you how that's fixed. And when you're first making box joints, getting little gaps in your work is uh, quite often what happens. And so you need to know how to fix it. So, how do we fix that? Well, I guess there are two ways really. The easiest way is if, there's, if the gap's big enough, is just to cut a little shim of the same wood and glue that in. If, as in this case, it's a uh, small, uh, very slim little gap, then it's a good idea to get some sawdust of the same wood, mix it in with a bit of glue and squeeze it into the joint. And that's what I'll do now. Just push that in and down there. And we'll leave that for half an hour at least. So there's the finished finger joint. I'm happy with that now. As you can see, that's quite a good method of filling in joints where you've got a little gap. Don't always get it perfect, but that looks good now. As long as the joint's sound, then I don't feel there's any problem with filling little gaps up. So, next time, uh, we'll look at dovetail joints. A little bit more trickier than these, but not too much so. What I'm going to do is use the box joint I've demonstrated here to do two corners of a box and the dovetail joints they show next time to do the other two corners then we'll basically have a, the framework of the main box body 
And after that, we'll make a lid and a base for it. See you next time.